The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Thank you, thank you. This is Groucho Marx. Well, here I am, stepping in over my head again. With Fibber McGee and Molly. Folks, this is just as new to me as it is to you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Well, what an original greeting. Welcome to another post of comedy funny haha by doing old time radio. <clears throat> This week we will listen to the be- the very beginning of the Jack Benny program. Jack Benny, as you should know, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you, Jack Benny was probably the most successful radio comedian ever. He's, his show was on the radio for from 1932 to uh, sometime in the 1950s, I think 1955. You will hear that in this is we're gonna to listen to his very first episode, his very first broadcast of his radio program. This episode is far from the Jack Benny program that m- most everyone is used to hearing with Rochester and uh, Mary uh, and Phil Harris uh, and so on with the skits and the comedy and the skits and the skits and the, and the jokes and the funny one-liners. This episode, his very first show, you can hear that they were really trying to figure it out. For some reason, the program is mostly music, singing and instrumentals, with him telling jokes in between, it's kind of like a stand-up co- comedian, a stand-up show with music in between, or music with stand-up in between. As I said in the earlier podcast post, Jack Benny got to start in vaudeville, so maybe this is kind of the vaudeville leaking over into the radio program. It took a few more years before he developed the radio style and the radio program that most people are used to hearing. This first episode, actually his first six months, he was sponsored by Canada Dry Ginger Ale, as I said, on the NBC Blue Network. He was there for about six months and then he transitioned over to CBS. I don't know if there's a title for this first episode. I just have it as titled as the first show. It aired May 2nd, 1932. campaign of ginger ales presents a series of programs to advertise the new made-to-order Canada Dry, which you can now buy by the glass at drug stores and soda fountains. This series will feature George Olson and his music, Miss Ethel Chute, the star of many Broadway successes, and that suave comedian, dry humorist, and famous master of ceremonies, Jack Benny. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thorgerson. That's pretty good from a man who doesn't even know me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny talking and making my first appearance on the air professionally. By that I mean I'm finally getting paid, which of course will be a great relief to my creditors. I, uh, I really don't know why I'm here. I'm supposed to be a sort of a master of ceremonies and tell you all the things that will happen, which would happen anyway. I must introduce the different artists who could easily introduce themselves and also talk about the Canada Dry made to order by the glass which is a waste of time, as you know all about it. You drink it like it and don't want to hear about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, a master of ceremonies is really a fellow who is unemployed and gets paid for it. I think you will like the entertainment arranged for tonight, I hope. Of course, I haven't seen any of the program myself, but I've spoken to the artists individually. They seem to think it's awfully good. The uh, first number will be a selection by George Olson and his orchestra. I think this, uh, being our first program together, it is no more than fair that I have you meet Mr. Olson personally. He's really a very charming fellow and one of the few directors who comes to and from his work on roller skates. 
That's perhaps the silliest thing that I'll say all night, I think. I, um, I might add that Mr. Olson is very, very handsome. I told you, George, I'd get that in. Uh, but as long as we are both on the air, of course, I won't have to worry about that. Oh, George, uh, come here. I want you to say hello to the folks. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, that was George Olson, ladies and gentlemen. He uh, rehearsed that speech all week. You know, uh, this is really all play with George. He doesn't have to work at all. I might say that uh, Mr. Olson is one of the wealthiest conductors in America. You know what I mean. He owns his own car. Of course, the other boys are in debt, too. Uh, George, uh, what kind of a car have you? A Saxon. A what? A Saxon. A Saxon, huh? Well, that was my fault for bringing it up at all. I... Uh, is it a new one, is it? Oh, yes, a very late model. I see. Well, you must have been in this country a long time now, haven't you, Georgia? <laughs> yes. Yeah, say, by the way, Jack, what kind of a car have you? Me? I have a bicycle built for two. I mean, now, you can't go back any further than that, I think. Well, George, I think we ought to get started. What's the first number? I beg your pardon, Mademoiselle. It's a French number, Jack. Do you like French numbers? Do I? Mon duck, mon duck. <laughs> important directing that orchestra, you know, with the baton in your hand. I don't know, there's something about all you fellows when you stand there waving that stick in the air. It's thrilling, you know. One thing I'd like to know, George, if the band didn't show up, what would you do with that stick? Why, I'd throw it away and do what you're doing. <laughs> Always kidding. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I present a young lady who is a star of many New York productions, Miss Ethel Chate. Uh, you will remember Miss Chate best in Whoopi playing opposite Eddie Cantor. Is it all right for me to mention Cantor's name here? Everybody else does. Uh, Ethel, come over and say hello. Oh, hello. Wasn't that clever? Oh, she does a lot of things like that. You'd be surprised. And Miss Chute is going to sing for her. She has a beautiful voice, too. She has a sort of a nervous soprano. You know what I mean? She, in fact, last week she had her nose lifted so she could be heard in Philadelphia. And, uh, oh, by the way, here's a little news for you might interest you. Miss Chute is really Mrs. George Olson. Although I wouldn't go as far as to say that that's the reason she happens to be on this program. Nevertheless, she's Mrs. George Olson. Such a nice girl, too. I'm surprised that she's married to Olson. And now uh, Miss Chute will sing, uh, I Found a Million Dollar Baby. I still feel a little Frenchy tonight, Ethel, so it's mon duck to you, too. <laughs>
forgot to mention that Miss Chate was assisted by Fran Fry. Of course, I'm lucky that I remember anything tonight. Uh, but you know, folks, all the time Miss Chate was singing, I kept thinking of my girl. You know, I get so sentimental. I really have a girl. She lives in Newark, New Jersey. You know, the girl I go with when I'm in Newark? She's not what you call good-looking exactly. In fact, she's quite homely, but then she can't stay in the house all the time. I... I, I imagine you folks have seen her pictures in different magazines. You know, she poses for the beauty ads entitled Before Taking. And she um, comes from a very fine family, although her father very often partakes of the forbidden beverage. It's all right for me to mention that, as they have no radio. In fact, her father drank everything in the United States and then went up north to drink Canada Dry. Boy, I'm glad I thought of that, Joe. You know, the one about Canada Dry? I'm really supposed to mention it occasionally. After all, I I owe it to my sponsors, and they might be listening in. Uh, seriously, though, do you realize, folks, that if you want a drink of Canada Dry, well, say just a glass, you don't have to buy it in the bottle. You can walk into any drugstore or soda fountain that has that big sign, Canada Dry, made to order, ask for a glass and get it. I know you always have it in your home in bottles, but isn't it nice to know that you don't have to wait until you get home to drink it? Gee, I thought I did that pretty well for a new salesman, eh? I suppose nobody will drink it now. And now, folks, a very stirring number called I Love a Parade with a vocal refrain by the Messrs. Fran Fry, Bobby Borger, and Bob Wright. I'm 
was having a tea. I love every beat I hear of a drum. I love a parade. When I hear a band, I just want to stand and cheer as they come. The sound of a drill will give me a thrill. I thrill at the skill of anything military. I love a parade. A handful of vets, a line of cadets, or any brigade. Boy, I love a parade. I love to see the boys in blue and hear their heavy tread. I used to love that Navy band with Sousa at its head. I love a stirring war parade, but best of all I feel the biggest thrill when college boys come marching down the field. That was I Love a Parade, ladies and gentlemen. The kind of a number that grips and thrills you, gives you that great feeling of patriotism, and makes you glad that you're an American. Personally, it didn't bother me very much because I took a nap while the boys were playing it. And uh, uh, now, folks, in case you've forgotten, this is Jack Benny again. You know, the Canada dry humorist. Say, I thought that was good. The Canada dry humorist. I made that up myself, huh? It sounds like it. Uh, that witty retort was by George Olson, ladies and gentlemen, proving again that he is still an orchestra leader. At that, uh, George has a great sense of humor. Say, he told me a, st- a story the other day. Do you mind if I tell it, George? I'll give you credit for it, you know. It's really supposed to be true, too. It's about George's uncle, who had been ill for a long time. He had what you call labor poisoning. You know what I mean? He just would- couldn't stand working. So his doctor finally told him that he would have to get a lot of fresh air, do outside work, but not lift anything heavy. He told him that at no time was he to lift anything heavy. So his uncle got a job as a garbage man in Scotland. Funny, I... Funny, you know, I never heard that one before, but the thing that kills me is Olsen telling a Scott story. I mean, because George, you know, is no centrist himself. In fact, he invited me to dinner the other night, much to his own surprise, and he paid the check with a $5 bill that was in his pocket so long that Lincoln's eyes were bloodshot. That's a fact. Uh, however, he will now favor us with that very popular song hit called Paradise. After all, why should his orchestra be an, an exception?
This is George Olson speaking. Uh, by this time, I know you're thoroughly bored listening to Jack Den, uh, Ben uh, Brewer, uh, well, our master ceremonies and his alleged Canada dry humor and telling you all about made order Canada dry. We also have a product to sell. It's music. And may we show you now just how we make music. <laughs> Now, first there's Wally. He sure plays some with two little sticks and beats on his drum. And that's how we make music. Now we have the boys with their violin. Their bows go back and forth when they beat in. And the drum. Now the trumpet play loud and shrill, but when they get going, they'll give you a thrill. And the violin and the drum. The old trombone slides up and down. When he gets hot, he goes to town. And the trumpet, the violin, and the drum. When we want to shiver, a quiver, or a groan, we call upon the boys with the saxophone. And the trombone, and the trumpet, and the violin, and the drum. Please, please, now, when we want some rhythm, where do we go? Why, it's old Bob Rice with his old banjo. And the saxophone, and the trombone, the trumpet, the violin, and the drum. Oh, the cow is now a little birdie. All right, Earl. Now, the next old fella can't be beat. You know him well. It's Piccolo Pete. And the banjo and the saxophone. The trombone, the trumpet, the violin, and the drum. Okay, Ben Burney, if you like it. That's it. Now, we have the piano for cadences and such. All he needs is a very light touch. And the piccolo, and the banjo, and the saxophone, and the trombone, and the trumpet, and the violin, and the drum. So are you, so are you. Now the old bass fiddle plays way down low. He has to get a derrick to move his bow. And the piano, and the piccolo, and the banjo, and the saxophone, and the trombone, the trumpet, the violin, and the drum. Hey, please. Bass, piano, piccolo, banjo, saxophone, trombone, trumpet, violin. Now that's how we make music. That was cute, George. I mean, babies will like it anyway. I think. And, um, uh... That, ladies and gentlemen, is the way these boys make music. Now, if they could only play it. Uh, Mr. Olson will now play Come West, Little Girl, Come West. And I'm supposed to sing a chorus of this number. And do you know, folks, that six months ago, I couldn't sing a note. Really, I could not sing a note. But after taking three glasses every day of Canada Dry Made to Order Ginger Ale, I still am unable to sing and can't even sign a note. So the moral of this is drink that champagne of ginger ale, Canada Dry, and don't worry about signing notes. So for want of a better soloist, Miss Chute will sing, Come West, Little Girl, Come West. I'm going east. I love to hear a cowboy sing like a cowboy sings when he's blue. Round the campfire on the range When his daily work is through If I could hear a certain love song What memories it would bring I can't forget that love song The cowboys used to sing The sun will set, the moon will rise but I want to look in my baby's eyes. Come west, little girl. Come west. The breeze will blow. The stars will be. But I'm too lonesome to go to sleep. Come west, little girl. Come west. Oh, don't be pining. I 
love the west, it's full of charm, but I rest best in my baby's arms. Come west, little girl, come west. The sun will set, the moon will rise, but I'm gonna look in my baby's eyes. Come west, little girl. Hello, everybody. This is Kate Smith, or uh, Jack Benny talking. You see how nervous I am? I mean, not so much because I'm broadcasting, but I think all my relatives are listening in, and I don't want them to know that I'm working. Uh, although I have uh, I have an older brother that I'm quite fond of. I mean, we get along great. We sort of share everything together. I mean, what's mine is his, and what's his is his, you know. I, uh, although I, this has absolutely nothing to do with Canada Dry Made to Order. I keep getting entirely off the subject. But don't forget, folks, that you can walk into your neighborhood drugstore, or any drugstore. I mean, after all, I don't care what drugstore you walk into. I'm just the master of ceremonies here, that's all. I mean, if I'm going to have to worry about things like that, you know, I'll have my hands full. But go into any drugstore and order a glass, mind you. Not a bottle, but a glass of made-to-order Canada Dry Ginger Ale and stagger out. Isn't it funny the things you can buy today in a drugstore? I went in for an aspirin the other day and came out with a new hat. I, I, I imagine the next number will be by George Olson. He's about to make his first appearance on this program. In fact, I'm lucky to get in here at all. Uh, this is called Drums in My Heart. And boys, try and finish this all together if you can. Will you please? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, was the last number on our first program on the 2nd of May. Are you sleeping? Huh? I hope you'll be with us again Wednesday. 
In fact, I hope I'll be here Wednesday. George, though, we all hope that we'll be here Wednesday. Well, good night, then. All aboard, away we go. Get that little lady on the train, boy. All aboard. concluding the first program in a new series sponsored by Canada Dry. The ginger ale now available made to order at drug stores and soda fountains as well as in bottles. Canada Dry has presented Jack Benny, Ethel Coupe, and George Olson and his music. The same group of artists will be with you at this time Wednesday evening. Drums in my heart from through the years was played tonight with the special permission of the copyright owner. This is the National Broadcasting Company. WJZ New York. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, you can listen to my podcast on all podcast services. You can also go to my website, otr.duane.media, to listen to all of my podcasts. There is donation information, patron information, and more all on the website. The website is slowly improving. Thank you for your patience. Uh, It takes a while to update and add information to the website, but it's getting there. You can also find me on Instagram, duane.otr. You can also email me if you want, info at otr.duane.media. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, stay safe, wish you well, and as always, peace.